Hi, my name is Mick and this is betterfamilyphotos.com. Today I'm going to show you what's in my travel bag. The purpose of this video is twofold. First, is to provide some suggestions for some equipment and lenses to bring on a vacation. And secondly, is to show how compact mirrorless systems are. So first, let me tell you, uh, give you some context about my trip. Um, this is not a casual trip. Um, it's to um, Italy and I've never been there before. It's probably unlikely that I will ever go back there again for the foreseeable future given the time and effort and expense involved. So I want to err on the side of uh, being over inclusive rather than having or needing something and not having it with me. So a lot of you, what you'll see is kind of like overkill, especially for a casual trip. Uh, but you know, for what it's worth, I'm just going to show you what I have in my bag and explain the rationale for each of the um, equipment that I'm going to bring. And again, like I said, it also illustrates how compact mirrorless systems can be. So let's get started. So this is my bag, uh, or the bag that I'm going to bring. It's just a, a holster bag. It's a very compact. Um, I do have bigger bags, but uh, for this trip, my, <clears throat> my purpose is to enjoy the trip and I'm not there uh, as a photographer or on a photography assignment so I just wanted to have a smaller bag and um, if I take any good pictures great that's just like a bonus um, otherwise I'm there to enjoy my time so um, let's look at what's inside the bag First, this is the Sony A6000 uh, and in it, uh, on it I've mounted the uh, 16 2.8 uh, with a wide angle, ultra wide angle converter. It's two lenses in one. So I, I'm not sure if you've heard of the 16 2.8 but it has like um, a kind of like a bad reputation for optical quality. Having said that, I've used this lens um, often and I enjoy shooting with it uh, because I like shooting with ultra wide angle. And when I'm going to a new location, um, much of the photos that I will probably be taking will, you know, try to show the location. So that's why I wanted um, ultra wide as well as a wide angle. So uh, with the ultra wide converter, it provides an ultra wide uh, perspective. And if I remove the converter, it's you know very easy to remove. It's kind of like a lens hood. With with just a 16 2.8, it becomes just a regular wide angle. So it's uh, very versatile and that's why I have this with me. Next, this is the Sony 18 to 105 f4 lens. It's very big for a mirrorless lens, but because my cameras are so small, I still have room in my bag for this lens. And uh, the reason I have this is because it's a do-it-all lens and um, it's very versatile and can cover a, a wide range of situations. I foresee using this um, if we're in a hurry and I don't have time to change lenses or anything like that and I, and I don't know what to expect um, and uh, I can just mount this on the A6000 and be ready to deal with uh, pretty much uh, any situation. Now I've uh, I've tried uh, bringing this kit with me, this whole bag, uh, with these lenses and equipment. And 
uh, surprising thing to me was that I didn't use it nearly as often as I thought it would be. And um, it, I, more often I, sh I shot with the, the 16 2.8 and the ultra wide converter. So I was debating on whether to bring this with me uh, because it's kind of big and heavy. Um, but uh, like I said, because uh, the mirrorless systems that I have are quite small and compact, um, I had space in my bag for this. And, you know, um, as I said previously, I'd like to err on the side of being cautious and just include it with, uh, with my bag just in case. And um, it can also be useful at uh, longer focal lengths to provide a shallow depth of field and isolate the subject and separate it from the background. So that's why I have it. Um, next, I have the NX500, the Samsung NX500. I just got this camera maybe a month ago, uh, about a month ago, and I, I really like shooting with it. So uh, the reason I brought it with me, uh, several reasons. One is I love the image quality and um, I like the colors. Uh, I like the highest, highest quality. I, I just don't have um, an ultra wide uh, with a fast uh, aperture on it. Uh, there's, there's none for Samsung. The only ultra wide that they have is the I believe the 12 to 24, and that's not quite fast enough for low light, at least for my purpose. So with this, the NX500, the lens that I've paired it with is the 1650 OIS, that's the kit lens, and uh, it's very, uh, very sharp for a kit lens. It's definitely sharper than the Sony kit lens that they also have. And that's why I chose to bring this one instead of the Sony. And I foresee using this uh, this combination when I want to uh, cover a wide range of situations, kind of like the 18 to 105, but in a more compact form where I'm not so, I don't have like a lens that's attracting attention. Um, and the other nice thing about the, NX500 is it has the uh, selfie feature, and I know a lot of people um, think that's gimmicky, and uh, but hey, it's a vacation. I, uh, now of course uh, uh, it will come in handy. Next, I have the uh, twenty, uh, the Samsung twenty two point eight, um, so it gives an equivalent focal length of around. 31 millimeters because the crop ratio of the Samsung is 1.54. So uh, the reason I have this lens is it's faster aperture than the 1650. At uh, 20 millimeters, the 16 to 50 is I believe f4. So this is a full stop faster. So this was mo more useful in low light. And uh, I like shooting with this focal length. I had uh, debated on whether to bring this or the 30 f2, but I ultimately decided to get to bring this one instead because I prefer the focal length, even though the 30 f2 is uh, uh, has a wider aperture. I think this focal length will be more useful to me, especially since I'm going to a location where you know the environment is definitely a big part of the the photos. So next I have the Olympus Stylus 1. This is a point and shoot camera with an effective focal length of 28 to 300 millimeters at the constant f2.8. So um, the reason I decided to bring this is because a lot of travel photographers seem to um, recommend having like a 70 to 300 so um, this is going to be my substitute for that uh, it will cover all the way up to 300 and um, 
that's that's what I'm trying to use this for to cover the longer focal lengths. Next, I have an unusual camera. The, uh, this is the Fuji W3. It's a 3D camera. And a, a lot of uh, people think that 3D photos are kind of gimmicky, but I really enjoy shooting with this, uh, this camera. And, um, you know, going to a new location, I can foresee many possibilities for using this camera. <clears throat> Next, I have a small flash. Uh, this is the Samsung um, SEF8A. I don't know if I will really need this, but it's so small. It takes up all, next to nothing. Uh, next to no space in my bag anyway, so uh, I'm bringing it just in case I need it um, on Samsung NX500. Next, I have the, this is a small flash from Sony. Uh, this is the HBL F20M. Um, same rationale as the, the Samsung flash. I don't know if I'll really need this for the A6000, but if I do, um, then it's there. Uh, it's so compact that um, I can take it with me easily. Lastly, um, I have a tripod, the one that I'm bringing is the Joby Gorillapod um, Hybrid. <clears throat> This is a, um, a tripod by Gorillapod that was made specifically for mirrorless systems. So it's a lot smaller than um, their larger Gorillapods made for DSLRs. Um, that's pretty much it. So I have all these um, cameras and, and lenses with me um, and they all fit this bag, this, uh, this small uh, holster bag. So, well, um, that's it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much, and if uh, you check out our blog, I'll have further information on these uh, cameras and lenses. Thanks very much.